10. Randy Lanes One day in 2015, 47-year-old Randy Lane shot a six-foot-long broadbill swordfish with a spear gun. He was fishing on a pier in Hawaii. Just moments later, he jumped into Honokohau Harbor in an attempt to catch the massive creature. The wounded fish impaled Lanes's midsection with its three-foot-long sharp bill, and the next thing witnesses knew, he was floating in the water. They pulled Randy onto the pier and gave him CPR, but the damage was fatal. He was officially pronounced dead once he got to the local hospital. A Hawaii County Fire Department spokesperson told press that broadbill swordfish is an aggressive species that will defend itself pretty good if someone messes with them. Lanes was an avid and experienced fisherman who even made a living through chartered fishing tours for aspiring anglers. He unfortunately learned the hard way that even with his level of expertise, anyone can fall victim to the sea monsters lurking in Hawaii's waters. 9. Mohamed Idol 16-year-old Mohamed Idol was fishing with his parents off Indonesia's southwest Sulawesi province in early 2020 when a needlefish jumped out of the water and aimed straight for his head. In what can only be described as a close brush with death, the creature impaled the boy's neck and pierced all the way to the back of his skull with its long, slender snout. Muhammad was rushed to the hospital with the fish still attached and had to undergo an emergency life-saving surgery. Three surgeons and two anesthesiologists worked together to remove the needlefish without damaging a large vessel in the teen's neck. Shortly after the operation, a hospital spokesperson announced Muhammad was stable but feverish and at a high risk of infection. He remained under the watchful eyes of medical staff while he recovered. While there are many instances of people surviving needlefish attacks with serious injuries, there are only two known fatal needlefish attacks that have been recorded. One involved a 10-year-old boy that was struck while fishing with his father in 1977. The other happened in 2018 when a needlefish impaled a 22-year-old Thai soldier during a training exercise. Needless to say, Muhammad was very lucky to survive. 8. Deadly Opening Day Crab fishing is considered one of the world's deadliest jobs, and the dangers that are associated with it were exemplified on the first day of snow crab season in January 2005. The Bering Sea was raging, with winds hitting 40 miles per hour, but when there's money to be made, there's no stopping crab boats from seeking out their fortunes. The 92-foot Big Valley and the 134-foot Sultan set out onto the unforgiving waters in hopes of returning to shore with tanks full of crabs. Later that day, the Big Valley ship was caught up in the storm and sank, roughly 70 miles west of St. Paul Island. During a helicopter search and rescue mission, the Coast Guard found three men in survival suits, only one of them, 30-year-old Cash Seal, survived after being pulled from the life raft. Three other crew members were still missing, including the Big Valley's captain, Gary Edwards. Meanwhile, 150 miles north of St. Paul Island, a 33-year-old deckhand named Manu Lagai was washed off the Sultan's deck wearing only rain gear. Without a survival suit, a person has just minutes to be rescued before the freezing sea kills them. With a survival suit, that time frame gives them a little over five hours. Unfortunately, Langai wasn't found, and neither were the three missing crew members from the Big Valley. Rescue searches quickly turned into recovery missions. The missing crew members were presumed dead after several days of searching revealed no evidence of their remains. 7. Luke Pasco 17-year-old Luke Pasco was spearfishing off the shores of Mistaken Island in Western Australia recently when he saw a massive great white shark in front of him. He had no time to react before the SUV-sized fish lunged at him, biting his legs. The teen later told the local news outlet Nine News that he kicked as hard as he possibly could in an attempt to get to shore, or in his words, at least to a point where I felt the shark couldn't get me anymore. Luckily, Pasco's best friend, Connor Shirley, was nearby and saw everything. Shirley rushed to his bunny. He made a tourniquet out of a diving belt and quickly put it on Pasco's leg, then carried his friend on his back to help. Pasco was rushed to the emergency room, where he received treatment for lower leg lacerations. When the story first broke headlines, he was still in the hospital. The young man credited Shirley with saving his life, 
and said he'd laid in bed the night of the attack, thinking about how lucky he was to be alive. 6. The Pseudo Harvet Marine biologist Matt Lewis was 23 years old when he got hired in 1998 to work as a scientist on the South African fishing vessel, the Pseudo Harvet. With 38 crew members aboard, the 144-foot-long ship left Cape Town for the sub-Antarctic island of South Georgia in the middle of an icy winter to catch some highly coveted Patagonian toothfish. The boat ended up in the Furious 50s, a region among southerly latitudes that's notorious for unforgiving conditions. On a particularly rough day, the crew faced 33-foot swells that Lewis said cast shadows over their boat. At some point, the pseudo Harvard began taking on water and tipped over, giving the crew no choice but to abandon ship. There were no survival suits on board, so crew members piled onto three life rafts and began drifting at sea. Lewis, who was in a raft with 16 others, later said the freezing cold water inside the raft was waist deep as they waited helplessly for rescue to arrive. By the time they were saved, he was close to death and the storm had killed 17 crew members. Lewis and the other survivors were suffering from severe hypothermia and were barely able to function mentally or physically. They were saved by the crew of a ship called the Isla Camilla, which Lewis named his daughter after years later. Lewis initially thrived after this terrifying brush with death, telling the Guardian he even returned to sea for a few months just to prove that he could. In reality, he struggled for years as he shut out his loved ones and tried to find his way in life. He eventually worked through his trauma and went on to enjoy a successful career and marriage, which he discusses in his book Last Man Off, a true story of disaster and survival on the Antarctic seas. 5. Farjan Idam 15-year-old Farjan Idam was fishing with some friends at Lake Tolai in Ternate City, Indonesia this year when he decided to sit on a log and take a rest. Suddenly, a huge crocodile came out of the water and attacked him. Edam's friends tried to help as the reptile dragged him into the lake, but they got hit by its massive swinging tail and decided to run for help instead. The boy's body was later seen floating in the lake from a distance, but the recovery effort was initially delayed by the presence of two other crocodiles in the water. Finally, two days later, Edam's mutilated remains were recovered. His arms were torn off and his head was almost completely severed. The tragedy, along with other recent crocodile incidents, highlights Indonesia's growing problem with human-animal conflicts. These attacks are happening more often due to the increasing crocodile population in the area, along with the expansion of human settlements into the reptiles' natural habitats. After the attack, authorities close Lake Tolaya while they work to assess the level of danger crocodiles pose to the public. 4. The Kaizen in 2013, a Chinese factory fishing ship called the Kaizen caught on fire near the Bransfield Strait, which runs right between the South Shetland Islands and the Antarctic Peninsula. Built in 1990, the 341-foot ship was operated by a deep-sea fishing company and was equipped to sail in loose pack ice conditions. But for one reason or another, it ran into a heap of trouble in one of the world's most unforgiving environments. Luckily, a Norwegian fishing ship managed to rescue the Kaizen and rescue all 97 members of its crew. After the rescue, the burning vessel drifted aimlessly, coming dangerously close to glaciers as it fell into a pitiful state. It became clear that the Kaizen had finally sank when the captain of a fishing ship in the region reported it had dropped from his radar. Shortly thereafter, crew members found nets and other equipment floating in the water. Concerned about fuel spillage, the Chilean Navy searched for the sunken vessel and prepared to contain any spills. Officials determined that an environmental disaster was unlikely, telling the Associated Press that any fuel on board likely burned up during the initial blaze that engulfed the Kaizen. The company that operated the ship said that it caught fire while fishing, and an investigation was underway to determine the accident's true cause. 3. Fisher Hurico during a family trip to the Florida Keys recently, 13-year-old Fisher Hricko started screaming for his mother from the water near their boat. He'd just caught a lobster in his hand and was swimming to the surface when a shark bit him right in the face. 
The boy's mother, Rhiannon, pulled Fisher and her husband onto the boat and rushed back toward the dock. They quickly went to the hospital, where the teenager received 10 stitches to close a nasty cut on his lip. After getting treated, he told WSVN that the injury hurts every so often, but for the most part, he felt fine. He also said he wasn't going to let the incident stop him from returning to the ocean, but he would naturally be cautious and scared during his first few trips back into the water. Rhiannon, who was accustomed to staying in the boat, told the news outlet she planned to keep it that way, noting that the possibility of an attack was always in the back of her mind, and it's why she usually doesn't get in the water. She also said that the time it took to get Fisher onto the boat was the most terrifying five minutes of her life, adding that even after her family was safe, she couldn't get the sounds of his scared screams out of her head. 2. Villa de Patanxo Based out of northwestern Spain's Galicia region, the fishing boat named Villa de Patanxo was built to withstand brutal seas. But just like any maritime vessel, it had its limits. While fishing in frigid waters about 280 miles off Canada's Newfoundland coast earlier this year, the ship sent out a distress signal. By the time rescuers reached the area, though, the boat had vanished under the choppy waves. They began the search for survivors amid the high winds and reduced visibility. Out of the boat's 24 crew members, three survivors were pulled to safety, while 10 lifeless bodies were recovered. The 11 missing crew members were ultimately presumed dead. After the tragedy, the survivors told conflicting tales about what really happened on the ill-fated ship before it went down. Samuel Quasi Kufi claimed the Villa de Patanxo's captain, Juan Pardin, ignored crew members' warnings as the boat took on water and began to tip. He said the sailors had advised Pardin to release his net, which they believed would help the vessel restabilize. But the skipper failed to do so, so the ship continued to fill up with water. Kufi also accused Pardin of failing to tell his men to abandon ship or put on any life jackets. On the other hand, Pardon and his nephew Eduardo Real, who also survived, claimed the ship's engine had stopped while Pardon was trying to collect the nets. The conflicting narratives prompted Spain's national court to order an investigation into the matter to determine if the skipper is criminally liable for the disaster as a whole. If the findings determined Pardon's actions played a role in the 21 deaths, he could face serious charges ranging from negligence to reckless murder. 1. Franklin Freddy Me Vasquez A scalloping vessel named the Captain Billy Haver was operating roughly 50 miles off the Nantucket coast back in 2018 when one of its crew members, Franklin Freddy Me Vasquez, hit someone in the head with a hammer, knocking him out cold. The 31-year-old then left the shucking house and went into the deck, where he stabbed another crewmate to death with a long fishing knife. A witness heard all the commotion and was trying to come onto deck from the ice hold when Meave struck him in the head with the hammer and slammed the door shut. The crazed fisherman then stacked heavy crates of oysters on top of the door to stop his third victim and another crew member from leaving the hold. After that, Meave tried to stab the captain himself. A struggle ensued between the two before Meave climbed to the top of the rigging, where he stayed until the Coast Guard arrived and took him into custody. His second victim, the one he stabbed, died, while the others survived. Meef, a Mexican national who was in the US illegally at the time of his deranged attacks, pleaded guilty to several federal charges, including second-degree murder, attempted murder, and assault with a dangerous weapon. He was given about 20 years in prison and will be deported to Mexico after serving his time. While describing the ordeal as a horrific act of workplace violence, U.S. attorney Rachel S. Rollins said that while the sentence can't erase the suffering of the victims and their families, she hopes it can bring some accountability to the case. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be stuck on a boat surviving off the fish you catch for two months or get bit by a shark and spend a week in the hospital? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.